On this dirt head shed, it's time to address the elephant in the room. And that elephant being that axle not fitting underneath that bed. So let's see what we can do about that. give you a little heads up on what's going on here and what step one's going to be. I body dropped the bed for the Nissan in a previous episode. This truck is already body dropped on the cab and the frame is pretty much done. I'm just kind of needing to narrow this rear axle and finish up rear suspension. So this episode is going to be all about figuring out how to narrow the rear axle or if that doesn't work what I'm going to do to substitute this axle for something else. If you look down this side, you can kind of see like the wheel, right when it gets even, it's not out past the body at all. This bed does have some, some flare to it, but not enough to clear those wheels. So there's been a bunch of people commenting, like just pull the bed sides out. Um, that's really not as easy as it seems. Um, I was able to like pull these bedsides out about a quarter inch, but if you get beyond that, you end up having a problem with this front edge pulling back and creating a really bad gap at the cab. So, um, believe me, I wanted to just push these bedsides out and have it look cool, but I guess step one is to pull these wheels off. First, actually, we're going to get some measurements. All right, here's what we got. The outside of this wheel to the outside of the other wheel, we're at 64 inches wide. And on the bed here, from this lip right here to the other side is 63 and a half. So technically I could cut a quarter inch off of here and that rear axle would fit under the bed, but that's not going to work very well when the wheel's traveling and tucking up into this area here. So I want to make sure that when the truck is all the way down, it will still roll and the tires aren't rubbing in this area and creating a problem. So if I can take this rear axle and narrow it at all, it will kind of fix the problem that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the wheels off. And I'm going to pull the rear axle shafts out and I'm going to show you what my plan is. See what we can come up with. Let's see here. I figure I might as well show you guys what I've been working on on this thing. This is the rear frame clip and step notch in the frame. You can see I built that out of two by three, 120 wall, and it's all grafted into the stock frame here. And I've already started on the suspension part of it. It's got a wishbone upper and straight lower. so. The link is all sorted out. Now I just got to figure out this rear axle. Um, part of the reason why I don't want to just switch to a different rear axle is because that drive shaft's already paid for and that link's already installed and this stuff all works. So rather than change everything for something different, I'm going to try and modify what I've got. All right. So that was tight. I'm going to be pulling the axles out of this and I figure I might as well drain the oil. I've actually never changed the gear oil on the rear axle on this thing, so we'll find out what's going on in there. Maybe I did change it. That looks amazing. I might just be pouring out a bunch of nice oil. Or somebody else did maintenance on this thing too. Gosh, that's beautiful. All right, that's cool. I'm going to get the oil out of there. The next, next step on here is getting the brake lines off the backing plates. You can see here I've got the rubber hose that goes to the rear brakes. 
pinched off with some vice grips. So the key there is that you only want to lose, you want to lose as little brake fluid as possible. If you end up draining the master cylinder because you let it all drain out, then bleeding them later on is quite a bit harder. So get the brakes off of here. And it's got parking brake cables as well that are kind of in the way. But rather than taking all of the brake drum assembly apart and figuring that out, I'm going to climb under here and just unbolt the parking brake cable right here. And then it'll slip out of this little collar. All these axles seem like they're a little different from each other. Most of them do have a bearing plate, basically, that you loosen up on the outside here. That's what this one has. Some axles have like a C-clip, which would be like a Ford 8.8 or Dana 35. And those axles, you have to get inside the diff cover and you pull these clips out that are inside of the differential. Um, these axles, Toyota axles and like Ford 9 inches, they're all retained out here on the, on the bearing end. So this one I'm taking off these four nuts on the end and it should allow me to pull this axle shaft out um, once the axle shafts out then we'll talk about the options for narrowing this thing up come on out of there buddy that's really loud i am stoked at how easy this thing's coming apart so far i probably just jinxed myself but like truthfully for being a 20 plus year old truck and this thing spent its whole life at the beach in Oregon it's really clean uh, let me get a rag because I'm dripping oil and we will pull this axle out of here just like that all right all right there's the measurements 63 and a half is what I absolutely have to have without this thing um, without rolling fender lips and pushing bedsides. So on that axle being 64 wide, um, I'm pretty close. So I feel like if I can take these axle shafts and cut half to five eighths of an inch off of them and then cut this housing and take half to five eighths of an inch out of the housing, I should be able to create an axle that will fit under the bed of that without having to go out and buy a junkyard one or change up this link setup or change drive shafts. Um, I will have a little bit less engagement on the splines here, but I feel like if I end up cutting a little bit off and I still have about three quarters of an inch of engagement on that, it should be fine for a truck with low, ho low horsepower and an open differential. So. I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this thing up and we will see how it ends up. The goal is that I cut that and then I cut that and then I bolt this yoke back to there, slide everything in and kind of use the axle shaft itself to sort of realign it and then tack weld and finish weld and have a pretty simple narrowed rear end. All right, it's go time. I'm going to go ahead and cut on the on the tape mark here and then I will I'll probably cut on this side of it that way I can take this chunk off and I can go over to the bench and I can cut the other side exactly where I want it so I guess it's time to start chopping they say the first cut is the deepest all right I guess now is as good a time of any I guess now is as good of good as all right I guess it's time to let you know I have never narrowed an axle the way I'm about to do it. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I'm kind of committed now. So I'm going to chop this thing up. We're going to see how it works. I don't know that this is actually a tutorial on how you should chop down and narrow your axle, but this is a, a live experiment by Dirthead Dave. We'll see if it works or not. I might be ruining my truck. OK. 
cutting just on the inside of this three quarter inch tape. I'll clean that up and I'm gonna bevel the edge a whole bunch. That way when I do butt weld these together, there's at least a deep V that is getting welded up. This is cool. It's like some real hot rod stuff right here. Just figuring it out as you go, I guess. Moving right along, I got the uh, that end yoke basically ground down and cleaned up. I went over here and I beveled the edge on the axle itself and wire wheeled around to make sure everything's clean. Now I'm going to go over and we'll cut a little bit off of this axle shaft and I guess we will see how it all fits together. It's kind of moving pretty quick. I think I'm only into this about an hour right now. So I should be able to spin there. Yeah, that's good enough. I think what I'll do is cut on the tape line. That way I'm basically cutting it at 5 eighths of an inch. Need my grinder and my cutoff wheel. Swap that out. Plug that in. Grab my gloves and glasses. Whew. I did it. Cut the, cut the tar out of this thing. All right, now I just got to round the edges off on these splines so that it'll actually go back into the carrier pretty easily. That's kind of sketchy. That's a little sketchy. All right, the axle shaft is cut down. Not a whole lot of engagement there. We will find out if I did a good job or a bad job. I would recommend not doing what I've done. This might be a bad idea. What ifs? All right, here's where I hope it all comes together. My idea is that I can bolt this back on and then slide it into the housing. And if this is lined up in the carrier and this is lined up with the axle, and this one uses a sealed roller bearing on the end, this should stay square to where it needs to be, and I just need to figure out how to line it up on the axle and tack it together. So I'm going to bolt this onto there and see what happens. I think I need to go in there and tight, tidy up the splines a little bit and see if I can get this to engage a little bit more than it is. And then it's just a matter of squaring it up and tacking it together and seeing how well it all worked. Pretty cool. All right, I'm reeling it in. Um, I went ahead and trimmed a little bit off the end of the axle shaft so this thing is going in closer to where it's supposed to live. And I've actually got a little bit of a gap between where this and this are going to weld up. So I've got this pulled out right now and I was checking and it looks like I can cut a piece of two and a half in order to kind of make a sleeve for in there. So I've got a piece of two and a half inch exhaust tubing over here and I'm going to cut a chunk of that and I'm going to try and make a sleeve and that will help align all of this stuff. I think we're getting it figured out. I've got this little chunk of two and a half exhaust tubing and that is gonna fit in the housing with a little bit of persuasion. Kind of a tight fit is good on that. Let's see. All right. Oh, this is going to be good. Okay, let's 
say that's good. And then I'm going to set this up in there and see where we end up. Kind of running out of places to put the camera. Hang on. Okay. So I've got the axle fit to the right length. I've got a little sleeve in there. And that goes into the carrier like it should. Now that goes into that like it should. That's awesome. All right. Lower this down. I definitely think building all this in a proper fixture would make it easier and better. But I'm going for it. Right or wrong? Now we're cooking. That's awesome. Check this out. I got clamps on here to square the drum up with the backing plate. It kind of like gets to a spot and it feels right. This is now supporting itself and not flopping around at all. So I'm able to rotate that in order to get my get that out of the way i'm able to rotate that and i can line these marks up and basically as i push this in it bottoms the axle out in the carrier so i will bring it back out about a sixteenth of an inch line those marks up and we're going to weld this thing up super cool Let's take a little quick measurement here. If I'm like right just over three inches, we're at just about three and an eighth. That's perfect. Sweet. I think we narrowed this thing up just about five eighths of an inch, which is what I was looking for. So I'm gonna throw some tacks on that and then we can call this a win. That little piece of exhaust tubing should be awesome too because it'll keep it to where I'm not burning through when I weld this thing. Where did my gloves go? I always have to lose something, right? The axle turns super free. So cool. All right, I'm just going to weld this up. This is red. Oh. Here's a little trick if you're welding on your axle and you get an opportunity to, always do a full circle. Try and work your way all the way around in one shot. That way if it bends, it kind of like bends out of shape and then works its way back to being straight when you're said and done. Sweet. All right. I'm going to go ahead and do my second pass. That's awesome. There we have it. I've got a narrowed Nissan rear end. There it is. A narrowed rear axle for this Nissan. I'm gonna go ahead and button up the other side and get that tacked together. And I guess that's it for this dirt head shed. That was a really cool little project. Kind of fun to just jump in and tackle something that's been like on the back of my mind for a long time. Hopefully this works like I'm hoping it does. Hopefully I'm hoping. 
hopefully this thing works like I want it to work. Um, I think it's a pretty cool little project. Yes, I may have ruined a Nissan axle, but there's a wrecking yard down the road with a pile of them in it. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching this dirt head shed. Hopefully we get this Nissan on the road soon and we find out if that really works or if it doesn't.